Hello, hello, Michael Sean Corby here, um, doing our Instagram Live for Living Proof. And uh, I first and foremost want to say hello to all the hairstylists out there. Uh, this is National Hairstylist Day, and if you're watching and you're not a hairstylist, hey, send some love to your hairstylist today. Look, there were a million things we could do to celebrate hairdressers today, but I thought the best thing we can do on National Hairstylist Day is to give ourselves some love and to give ourselves some care. So if you've got the news on, if you've got kids running around, I want you to grab your iPad. I want you to go somewhere quiet because we have a very special treat for you today. Um, I'm about to bring on a dear friend of mine that since we were just we kids, all right, we were just past teenagers, but growing up in the same neighborhood, he's always had the ability to, to look at your life and figure out what you can do to, you know, sort of open one's eyes to what's possible. And um, I've watched him grow. We've watched each other grow. And so it's very exciting to have our very special guest today, who I am now going to invite, Mr. Richard Arden, here in Los Angeles. Um, and he is going to be helping us with a little something we hear a lot, but it's become almost a sound bite of self care. So sorry, I'll, I was getting an invite from somebody else at the same time. Sorry, Sandra, we've already scheduled Richard, but you don't want to miss this. He's pretty amazing. So Richard, he's accepted. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Sandra. I invited Sandra by mistake. <laughs> How are you doing today, Richard? I'm good, Michael. How are you? I'm good. You know, just very excited that it's National Hairstylist Day, you know, feeling the love from everyone around. Um, so we've had a lot of hairdressers on and we kind of figure out who were they as a teenager and so forth. But I don't want to waste any time because after spending just like an hour with you yesterday, mind blown, like just, just how much stuff you have to offer. So can you, can you first dig in and, and tell us about your, your method of integral culture, uh, coaching integral? Did I say integral? Integral, yes. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Integral, <laughs> integral. <laughs> integral, integral. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. So, so integral coaching is really about meeting the client, and in this case, meeting your community where they're at. And right now, we are all um, in such unprecedented moment of disruption in our life. And what integral coaching does is it looks at the condition, the disruption, and you as what, what's happening in your whole world, what's happening in all of your space, and not just specific to the problem. And the reason that we do that is, is that by investigating the structure of interpretation, the world, the way that you filter the world, the way that the world is being filtered through your eyes, by investigating all of it, we're able to find new possibilities outside of that filter, new ways to engage and change and challenge ourselves into a different way of being. And it was, I was, I was I'm reflecting on this. It is a, as we think about what's happening right now, that a coaching engagement generally happens when there's been some type of disruption in somebody's life. It happens because there's been a breakup, there's been a job transition, there's been a, I feel stuck, there's um, I'm I'm don't like my current job, I love my current job, but I want to I want to elevate to the next level. It almost always happens in some form of disruption to your your structure, and what a crazy moment that we're having a global disruption, right? And in that global disruption, as sad and, and i really want to say this with such love and compassion the um pain that is being felt right now around the world with the loss of life that is being experienced and all the the, the um for those in the front line that are um 
trying to help us and manage through this and those that are trying to find vaccines and all the things that are happening, my heart just pours out as and with with compassion and love for all of those the, those people that are suffering in this moment. And I don't want to lose sight of that there is true suffering that is happening in this moment as, as families lose their loved ones and someone that was close to them or they know somebody. So let alone the fact that we're all sitting at home isolated away from our connections, but the, the suffering that's happening right now. So I really want, I really want to honor that as, yeah. as a moment of, of just sort of pause. Um, and there is, I believe, there is a deep opportunity inside of this disruption for us as individuals, for us as a collective, for us as a community. And um, I'm hoping today that we can impart some of those, those little nuggets and, <laughs> and grow together. Me too. So when my head literally exploded, you said something you said, he meets you where you're at. Tell me what you meant by that. Yeah, it is, it is, there is no such thing as a cooker cutting, a cooker cutting coaching experience. There's really no such thing as a, um, let me give you a list of ingredients and now you go, go, go do those things. Um, the job of a coach is to meet you wherever you, wherever you may be. So wherever it is on the spectrum of understanding, of awareness, um, what I often call awakening as we start to tune into who we really are, wherever you are in that moment, and my job is to meet you where you're at. And what I find so um, beautiful about this moment is, is that we kind of all are in the same place. We're all in the same experience, having this same um, um, crisis moment together. So this meeting, is where, this meeting where we're at is right in tune to what's happening right now. Incredible. So I, it's almost a word that's being overused and I don't think it often comes with sincerity and when I saw how you laid it out I was like oh it's a real thing <laughs> what what is self-care Richard and I know that that takes us into you know what the program is about today sure 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 so so I'm gonna say so I'm, I'm gonna start this with um actually a poem because I think it gives a really uh a lovely narrative about what it is that self-care is Okay, um, so it's, it's a poem from Rumi and it's called The Guest House. Okay? So have a listen. So it's The Guest House by Rumi. This being human is a guest house. Every morning is a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. If there are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweeps your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. May, he may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. So wow. that, that really sums up the nature of what this is, what self-care is about. It is about putting you as a priority in the pecking order of priorities and mm -hmm. really allowing yourself to um, grow and develop and put the emphasis on everything that happens in here is going to reveal itself out there um, mm -hmm. through your perceptions, your thoughts, your actions. And so we can do the work internally self-care, then we can change and shift the way that we experience the world. Yeah. So I know, I know, you know, your services cost maybe not a lot of money, but a lot more than the average hairdresser has right at this moment. Can you kind of walk us through the, the steps or, or what it would look like to, to self-heal and things we can do? And then I've already got some questions that have been asked. Folks, if you're watching, put your questions into the question box. If you don't see the question box, just type it into the comments and um, we'll get those uh, asked. But Richard is here. This is a rare and incredible opportunity to ask him your questions directly. So please get those in. Um, and uh, we already have Rumi as my favorite from Marnie. So um, I'm sure you'll be in love already. So <laughs> walk us through the process, Richard. Sure, sure. So, so um, first off, I'm honored to be here with your guests. And, and as my job as a coach is to be of service. And so um, these types of opportunities 
opportunities to be available and to answer questions that come up during during this um, this conversation and to walk you through what a coaching experience looks like and to really focus in on from the way that I'm we're going to walk through this there are skills that can be developed that you can take away from this experience and use and implement in your life right now to alter what's happening now and impact you as we come out of this pandemic. So I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 among many models that that um, I use to um, to to aid the process, one of them is called the six streams of competence. And in those streams, it is the six different ways in which we interpret the world. Right. So it is the filter by which we interpret um, um, and that that interpretation happens through various streams of consciousness. And so um, I'll list them out and then we, we're going to dive in. We're going to dive into each one. Perfect. So um, cognitive. So cognitive is um, our thinking and reasoning self. Um, emotional. Um, what is our emotional um, um, resiliency, our emotional capacity? What's our emotional competence? Uh, the next one is um, somatic. What is our body? How is our, how is our body showing up? Um, we'll talk about that in detail. Um, relational. What are the relations that um, and relationships that I am forming, storming, um, um, building, tear, tearing down? Um, and what is the um, what is my spiritual life like? What am I, what am I like spiritually? And then the bring it all together is the in integrated integrating mechanism. How do we bring it all together? Perfect. So, and if you um, have what, any questions about any of those topics, folks, get those in because I will ask them as we go along if they if they relate. Beautiful, beautiful. So let, let, let's let's start let's start with with cognitive, right? So cognitive seems to be the one right now that is the pressure point on us as as a people. It is the overthinking process, like the the, the fear and the anxiety and the anxiousness that that is happening and the overworking of my thought process right now because of my worry about what's going on. Um, and it could be the craziness that's in your household or the fact that you're alone at this moment and you're only with your thoughts. So it is this, the, the, the cognitive competence is about how do I build skill to create balance and to slow down those thought processes so that they they're not interfering in my in my existence I, I look at them as and are they how are thoughts shaping your environment how are the thoughts that are that are coming up how are they how are they informing the world in which I'm living how are they filtering my existence right so we have a question what is something you know, we're talking about, you know, sort of cognitive thinking. What is a practice I can do to create balance in life? Um, I'm Netflixing too much. <laughs> I have, I saw a meme the other day that just busted me up. I finished Netflix. <laughs> I finished, I finished Netflix. That's how much it's this done. is. done. Yeah, this is a, a beautiful one. Um, you're going to hear me say this probably 982 times during this conversation. Meditate, okay. meditate, meditate meditate. Meditate is no longer for the spiritual seeker that locks himself up on a mountain and, and is gone for 42 days and comes back enlightened. Meditation yeah. is a practice you Utilized by the most um, um, skilled adventurers and athletes and performers in the world. It can have a context of spirituality. It can have a context of science and it can have a context of pure just humanness. And meditation is the practice. And this is something that people get off base on. I can't meditate. My thoughts are going crazy. I, yeah. I have too many thoughts. I can't meditate. That's actually the art of meditation. The art of meditation is failing a thousand times in the practice. And what that means is I recognize a thought coming. That's not doing it wrong. That's I'm aware right. that a thought has happened. And I let that thought go and come back to my breath. Right. Yeah. So this is how this is how you slow yourself down and create a respite for yourself between the thoughts. I, I recommend and I start my clients on a 10 minute meditation per day. Wow. OK. 10 minutes is is nothing, especially in this time of hours upon hours upon hours of of time yeah. at home. Right. Anytime. What a better yeah. time period to sort of get yourself developed in the practice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so 
I recommend a couple things. Um, I like to perform meditation with the aid of a tool. And okay. there are there are several apps apps out there. I'm not sponsoring any of these. They're just apps that I use um, yeah. that um, I really enjoy. So one is called Headspace. And okay. it is a Headspace comes at it from a more scientific view. So much more um, uh, grounded in science and the and the benefits of it from a from a from a science standpoint. Yeah. There's an, there's another one called Sync Tuition, um, S Y N C Tuition, Sync Tuition, and it's okay. it's just cool. It's a three D <laughs> landscape in with binaural beats. Okay, that goes for about ten to twenty minutes. Um, so if you're just beginning a meditation practice, Headspace is is your jam. If you've okay. got a little bit of experience with it, Sync Tuition, check it out. It's 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 cool beans. You're getting tons of questions. Um, hammock living, uh, which uh, that's our good friend Meredith. O overall, overcoming internal fear. Maybe it will uh, make sense to bring up that you know she's thinking like she's wondering how can she overcome her internal fear. Um, yeah, yeah, it's. I a, mean, is, it, or is that something that's in the six steps? She was like, maybe this will come up later since you said there's some <laughs> steps. Is it coming up? It's Does a, Meredith it's, have to wait? <laughs> it's, it's, it's coming up, but we can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can touch base on it here and then we'll, 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 we'll tap into it later. Okay, because I definitely have a question about thinking. <laughs> yeah, Let's, well, why, why, don't we hold it, why don't we hold it for that? Because I think it's, it, it'll wrap up nicely at that part of the conversation. Okay, yeah. so uh, Colleen is asking, what can I do if I live with an overthinker? <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a good that, that's a, that's an excellent question part yeah. of the challenge that we live in today and live in this moment is i don't think any of us have been around the same people for as long as we've been around them in the same confined space right even during like summer breaks when kids are home from school dad's dad and mom are still out working right right um, so it's just a whole different occasion we're going to talk about relationships in a bit but for for how do you how do you help with a, with an overthinker I, I, I always use a bit of a mirror back. And, and I, I look at this as we, those that are around us are often reflecting to us something that's in, that, that we need to hear ourselves, right? right? So okay. if you've got an overthinker around you, the first question I'd ask yourself is, what is this trying to tell me? What is this trying to reveal to me? What am I seeing from this that I can um, act upon? And so it, it allows allows you to see through the eyes of that other person. And that I think is one of the keys in this in this juncture. If you're dealing with somebody else, the moment you can put stand in their shoes and yeah. go, wow, I feel you, I and and have and have empathy about what they're experiencing, it softens that process with them. It allows you to to realize um, where they're coming from. And then from that, maybe make some of the recommendations that we're making today. Maybe a meditation practice together is a way that you can engage quieting thoughts. Um, the couple meditation is a beautiful experience. Um, it allows you to both share an experience and satisfy that, that overthinker in the moment. Yeah, and I know, Colleen, I would pay money to watch her husband meditate. Um, <laughs> I'm going, to give you you, I'm going to give you one more. I'll give you one more <laughs> recommendation because meditation for many, it yeah. freaks people out, right? Yeah. Many, oh my God, I can't. I can't. <laughs> so um, my other recommendation for us is, is, is breath work. And it is, it is as simple as this. The breath practice is, it's, it's about paying it, it's close attention to your breath. And you do it like this. You have four counts in, four counts in a breath, seven counts of holding the breath, and eight counts of releasing the breath. So why don't we do that? Why don't we all do that together? Let's, let's, okay, let's, let's have that experience of, of, of having a, some, a breath work together. Okay. So let's everybody, we're gonna inhale, and we're gonna inhale on four. So one, two, three, four. Now we're gonna hold it for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're gonna release for eight, nice and slow. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, oh my that, God, I feel a little buzzed. <laughs> yeah. 
that process, it, <laughs> it, it, it releases. It releases tension in the body. Its purpose is to slow the heartbeat. You've got a lot, a lot of chemicals that are going on and focusing on the breath with deliberate intention and that can count. So four, seven, eight. By making that, by making that, that focus, it dissipates energy. It breathes it out of you and oh. calms it. It's calming. Oh, my God. Love it. Okay, emotional. You mentioned emotional. Yes, yes. What is it? Because I feel like I'm getting emotional already. <laughs> yeah, emotion. So, so the, the emotional stream is about, are you able to discern your own emotions? Are you sitting and allowing your emotions in? This goes right to the heart of what Rumi was talking about. Is, are you letting in any of those emotions that are coming up in the spectrum, whether it's all the way to base, fear base, flight or fight, all the way up to um, angelic joy. All of the spectrum of emotion is meant to be felt and brought in and invited in to, to show you, process through you and leave, right? What happens to us is, is that we feel fear, right? We feel right. anger, we, get, we feel anxious, and we try to shove that emotion away. We push it, no, I don't wanna feel that, go away, go away. I don't want to have that experience. And by pushing it away, you create a loop right back to you. The universe says, you got to process this, dude. Like, let, yeah. let that emotion come through you. Your human experience is meant to process the emotion, discern the emotion. And the more you can discern the emotion and feel it, let it be there. Maybe you're home feeling loneliness right now. You're by yourself. There's no roommate you have, and you're feeling lonely. What if you just sat with that loneliness? Let it sit there and like, what are you here to teach me loneliness? What, what, what possibility can I, can I map out of this? And as you have that process of processing, the emotion flows through, right? It's 90 seconds processing and out it goes. It's, it's really miraculous when you let it, when you let yourself feel it. Oh, incredible. Freedom Flight um, in, her, in he or her 30s, sorry, I don't have your name. Maybe just shout out and give us your name. In your 30s, had eight anxiety attacks per day, went vegetarian, go vegan, and meditated uh, for six years and got off all medication. Congratulations. Woo no freedom. <laughs> that is that freedom play, that's that that's amazing i have i have many an antidote and many real life scenarios of the power of meditation to heal and to um elevate there's there is a um author authors um jamie wheel and stephen kotler who are the authors of a book called stealing fire and they reference and i, I love 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 this it is if you think about what's happening right now is that it's like being on mars all these rocks right and we're, we are yeah. we're we're forced in these, this, this crazy bumpy period. Yeah. But practices like we're talking about that we're, that we're engaging in, meditation, vegetarianism, um, um, veganism, um, conscious eating, all of these practices done consistently elevate you. And as you elevate, your vibration changes. And as your vibration changes, you no longer may need some of those things that were there previously, right? They're allowed to, you're allowed to let go of them and new circumstances, people and places come into your, come into your world. Yeah. So for some, meditation becomes a healing practice. It allows you to heal from some of those things that are, that are holding you back. Um, my coach, uh, Mastin Kip, he is a trauma-informed coach. And what that um, um, centers around is, is that we hold trauma and whatever that trauma was, the stress of the job, the stress from childhood, um, the, the uh, traumas that may have occurred in any form, we hold those patterns inside of us. And when we're able to release those patterns through, through these modalities like meditation, consciousness, breath work, um, sunlight, mindfulness, exercise, we're gonna talk about, the more you're able to um, move out of those experiences into something different. Yeah, oh, it's incredible. Okay, we are slightly over halfway through our incredible session. I'm going to, you talked about somatics. I believe. Somatic is next. Yeah, yeah. My memory is improving. But for, yeah, that's good. That's good. Somatic. This is, this is probably the least, um, um, paid attention to part stream in our consciousness. We all think of uh, body as um, body, yadi, yadi, right? I got, right. I'm, I'm out working at the gym.
gym, I got my things. And, and it's, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about our ability, ability to let the wisdom of our body speak to us, right? We all yeah. get those gut checks, right? The intuition, the where am I feeling that anxiousness in my body? And if I can tune into that in my system, then I can listen to the wisdom that it's bringing forward to me, right? So if you have that gut check or that intuitive moment, listening so that you can take action upon that intuition is the key. That's what, so that's what somatics are all about. Yeah. We have a question from Abby. Most humans are defined by their past. How do you move on from that and let us come into our own? Yeah, that's 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 beautiful, Abby, and that is the that's the heart of what we're talking about. We live, and I mentioned this earlier. We live in what's called a structure of interpretation. We live in this filter of our past, from childhood culture, from parents, from friends, from family, from religion. All of these things built the pattern of you, right? And you often can't see beyond that filter. You just see this thing. You just see your way of the world. And what, what a coaching experience or these conversations that create a little aha for you is there's something different on the other side. And the moment you can be aware that the way that I see the world is through a filter, you now have an openness and a, a, a doorway into I can now do something different, right? And so, yeah. and, and the something different has to happen through practice. It's, yeah. It is the it is the practice of a of something to engage you differently to shift you into someplace different, right? Thanks. That's that's the that's the art of what, what this is all about, and it it won't happen without consistent practice upon uh, with an action. Yeah, so freedom flight is at, uh, Claudia. We know in Brazil, so welcome. <laughs> um, so no alcohol, no caffeine, no nicotine. Um, he takes his runs and he actually meditates while he runs for five miles. You were such an amazing human. I had no idea. <laughs> that's phenomenal. That, that, that's yeah. amazing. Um, I've done many. I've done many a cleanse where you remove <laughs> things and then bring them back in to see their impact on you. Because that's what this is all about. All of this is about how can I tune in and get conscious about what's happening, right? So yeah. how, is, how is nicotine affecting me? How is caffeine affecting me? How is um, not sleeping affecting me? How is not moving my body affecting me, right? Yeah. And by, that's, that, that's the clue that's that you're, you're sort of yeah. tuning into. So let's talk about relationships and, and how that fits into all this. Yeah, one of the most uh, one of the most challenged aspects of our crisis right now, we're either, <laughs> for lack of a better word, trapped in a home with, with a bunch of people that we yes. love um, and, and they may be driving me nuts right um, yeah. um i don't have that experience actually i love my roommate we, we're, we're getting along famously actually but i but i i have had many conversation around that that aspect but relationships and this relationship stream is about how am i fostering and nurturing relationships and in this period it's fundamental to how you're going to to stay sane, right? Yeah. How am I connecting? How are you, am I, are you listening to lives with these kind of conversations? Are you connecting with your friends? Are you being heard? Are you being, are you listening, right? Yeah. What, what, what skill to develop right now, the skill of listening, right? Yeah. Listening yeah. to your friend as they're telling you of a story in a way that over video or Zoom is very different than being connected in real time. So the, you are up leveling the way you handle relationships by having to be in this experience that we are right now. I'm, I'm gonna ask a question. I'm on my runs, you know, there was just a, a living proof step challenge. So I was running around, walking around, you know, you're a friend, you know this, I never stopped moving and managed to pre produce more content than I ever have in my life and now everything hurts. <laughs> but when I was when I was out running around, you know, when your face is covered by a mask and you're keeping this distance, I'm just gonna say it, I'm having a really hard time out outside of my safe space, which is my home, which is online, connecting with other people. And it feels really weird because I am a I love connecting with people in public, in large events. And so do you have any advice for that feeling? Because I feel like that relates to relationships. 
Yeah, no, hundred percent. It is a, I, I think it is, it is an unknown time right now as I don't know that I could have ever projected or any of us could have projected we were going to be wearing a face mask into a grocery store or on a run. When, when would we have, we, in, in American culture, we just have not had that experience. Right. Other right. cultures, it's become, a, there's a normalcy to that. Right. And, and, and I think that's a good example. In other cultures, they have, they use masks on a daily basis and yeah. they find ways to create connection. Right. So yeah. uh, for me, and if you've been on a walk with me in our social distance, um, I, my hand becomes my smile. Right. I, I yeah. use my hand as my way to um, connect visually to the person that I'm seeing walking up. And most importantly, it's it's socially acceptable now to diverge. Right. To, yeah. to, to walk around. And I think it's just a allowing of that. Yeah, I feel I feel it's I feel some sadness right now that I can't I can't engage in the way that I would normally engage. Um, yeah. I feel disconnected by having my mouth covered, right, and people from seeing me. So it, awareness of that experience and and tuning it in and saying how else can I engage now with this happening? How else can I yeah. signal to yeah. others my connection? Makes sense. Um... We have another great question from Abby. Do you think extroverts are having a harder time or is it the assumption? Because, you know, she, Abby, I know this girl, she is certainly no introvert. So is I, it harder I, for them to, I to saw, not say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the best meme ever. It's like, dear introvert, introverts, go speak to your extrovert friends. They're having a hard time right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I was like, that is the be that's the best thing. They you're need you're right absolutely now. right. Yeah, they're not good right now. Go help them. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't want to take away from anyone's experience because I think introverts or extroverts alike are all experiences in a different way. But yeah. I think inter but I think introverts have a little more internal um, internal uh, um, capability capacity to handle. Um, isolation in a way that some of us like extroverts have a little more challenge with. Um, right. So yeah, I, I do think, I, I personally think that we it's a little more challenging as an extrovert to handle yeah. this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm somewhere in the middle. I could be on stage for a thousand people and then go to my room and like <laughs> watch, you know, CNN and eat, eat and not right. speak to us all. So right, I'm somewhere right. in between. Let's talk about spirituality. Richard, and spiritually, how how this connects to your steps? Yeah, yeah. There, there is, there is. Um, so again, uh, uh, Jamie Wheel and Stephen Kotler have a um, a phrase called "feed the holy," right? And what that what that refers to is that our we often tie spiritual to um, to God as that as the first pass to oh, that's what spirituality means. And I like to, to think of it and in, integral coaching frames it in a little different way. Spirituality is our connection, the interconnection of all of us to each other, the interweb of connection that exists between all of us, right? right. Below the role um, in this human meat sack evolving around a planet, uh, evolving around the sun, right? And right. at the deepest of levels, we are all connected. So spirituality to me is about how am I being of service? How am I connecting to the greater, to the greater good? How am I, and, and this process right now, right? COVID is, the, is a massive global, how can we all help our community stay safe, right? right. It's a loving act. In, in many ways, this process that we're in right now is a loving act. It is a loving process of I want to keep us safe, so I'm going to socially distance to keep our family safe, all of us yeah. as a family. So yeah. that's, I, I see spirituality in that way. I am very much a, um, I, I operate in a woo-woo world. I, yeah. I, I believe wholly um, in, in there is something bigger and greater than us. And it's that mystery, that, that mystery of, of the unknown that is um, like a, 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 a fly to the, to the light. Yeah. So what, what is, I, I think you covered it, but I, 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 you know, I hear a lot, you have to have faith. And in these times that are so uncertain, can you explain the difference between spiritual and having faith? 
Yeah, yeah. So f f faith is the foundation, spirituality is the byproduct. So th think of faith as faith is your ability to believe in something that you can't see, taste, smell, touch with your senses, right? It is an unshaking, and that faith could be in science, right? Faith yeah. doesn't have to exist in the realm of, of I believe in, in, in a God. Um, I believe in the universe. Whatever, whatever label you want to attach to, I believe in science. I believe in quantum physics. I believe yeah. in an energy field. All of that is premised on the idea that there is an unknowingness that we just can't know. Our, our little makeup, our skin suit, doesn't have the comprehension capabilities on purpose to not know that. That's what okay. faith is. Faith is that, that ability to to move forward um even when it's when 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 it's unknown and even when the times are most challenging right it's in these yeah. times of challenge that um faith becomes a center stone it becomes a mechanism for us to to cope what about is it is it time for meredith's question about internal fear yeah like, yeah like she 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 wants to believe it but i guess there's just a little feeling of doubt or fear still within? Yeah, I think it is. I think we honor our fear. I think that is the, the message in all of this is there, that, that there are techniques to help calm the vagus nerve and calm the body um, to remove the anxious construct of fear, right? The breath work exercises that we just did, um, movement, right? There is, um, I use that, that phrase, feed the holy. Um, feed the holy means everybody prays to something. Um, everybody worships something. It's just, you, what do we worship, right? For, for me, I worship dance music and electronic music. I love music. So for me, shaking that fear off and, and setting in that fear, maybe it's moving my body when, when no one's watching, like, dancing my ass off when, when, and not giving a crap what anybody thinks and letting myself get ritualistic about those practices. Maybe it's um, creating a beautiful vase of flowers. Maybe it's walking in nature. Maybe it's lighting a candle. Maybe it's gratitude. All of these little th little practices that feed the holy, those sacred moments are how you shift out of monkey Fight, fight or flight context and into a grounded, I can hover above this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see that there's a, a, a bumps ahead, but it's now smoothed out because I'm, I am practicing in a way that is centered and grounded and present. Yeah. I, I think I, I'm going to land there on the key to all of this is presence. It is how do you center yourself? It's I bring myself right into the moment. And how do I bring myself into the moment? I focus right now on what's in front of me. So maybe it's a, I see the, the cold drink with, with ice on it and the little sweat droplets on the side of the glass. I see you on my phone and I can connect to you on the phone. That tuning into the moment is how it brings you into right now. And right now, what's fearful about right now? Is there a, right, is there a fear right now? It's probably lessened as you get tuned in. Yeah, that's... It's amazing. And, and now as we bring it all together, is there a sixth step? Is it, yeah, what, yeah. what brings it all together and as, as a practice, if you will? Yeah, it's great. It's, it's a, it's, it's, it's integrating. So okay. integrating is the process of seeing the whole picture of bringing all of these streams into balance as I move through the world. Right. It is yeah. it is a way to recognize that all of life is happening for us. Um, Michael Beckwith, one of the um, very if you're in Los Angeles, he's one of the spiritual uh, teachers at um, the Agape Center. Yeah. And he has a process called the four stages of life. Um, life is happening to you. That's when you feel a victim. Life's happening for you. That's when you start to recognize there's more going on here. Life's, life's, life's actually for me. Life's happening through me and life is happening as me. And as you move through those stages, those stages bring to light that this is all a magical, glorious, billions of processes um, that are moving you into this, in, in through this space. Um, and I, I, Sean, I know we were talking yesterday about you know, the impact on your business. Do you wanna, do you wanna yeah. comment a little bit about that? I mean, so basically, and the question that came up is, what if I see my industry is changing 
beyond my comfort level and I'm not sure I can find a place for me in the future. I mean, we're talking about people who have distributed products their whole life, people or people who have cut hair their whole life in, and like working within a, a certain salon environment. What if they see their industries changing and, and you know, their comfort level to that change is, is off. They just, they're very resistant to that change as anyone would be because it's like a giant tipping over of what, what, what we're used to. What you talk about self care. What if your, your whole comfort balance is thrown off? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is, it is, there is, there is nothing more disquieting to the act of disruption. Right. And for some disruption is happening in um, quickly and aggressively, even before COVID there was, I um, lead in my other part of my world. Um, I lead a technology incubator that is building disruptive technologies um, on, on buying platforms. So, so the, the world of disruption is at play now as we move into a more digital landscape. We, and, the, and um, uh, more efficiencies and distribution models totally shift. Um, so, so disruption has been, is, it has been starting to play itself out um, across the board. But now, more so than ever, um, millions of us are in a place of total disruption where the possibility of what I, was, what I had may not be available to me when, I, when, I come out, when we come out of this. And I would ask, and this is, this is the keystone to all of this, and I'm going to tap into what I just made the comment about. It, it is in times of, of, of progress and excitement and happiness, I go, yeah, life's happening for me. This is wonderful. Life's happening for me. Um, and, but in, it's in the times of suffering when you need to tune in, when you want to tune in and recognize that life is happening for me. So if life is happening for me, this is a reflection. This is about asking yourself questions. And th this is what coaching is all about. It's asking questions and self-reflecting. And can I get curious about if I tune out the whole world and recognize that for me, life is going to life is being disrupted right now. And what I was used to is no longer available to me. So what it, for me is life happening for me? What what is happening? And get curious. Is what I was doing, do I did is that what I what I love? Do I love what I was doing? Can I pivot? Is there a pivot point here? Can I learn a new skill? Can I recognize that um, maybe as a hairstylist, my marketing skills need to be amped up? Can I recognize how managing in a virtual way is um, a, a possibility for me? Can I, can I shift into my passion? Maybe I've been a hairstylist my entire life, but I want to fucking play guitar, right? And what if playing guitar is the thing that life is trying to call you forward into? So yeah. it's about getting curious and it's painful. There, there is never disruption that is not, that is not uncomfortable. And the magic in all of this is growth does not happen in the comfort. Growth happens in the unknown. And it is in that unknowingness that the trick is to find, find comfort in that uncomfortable as you're asking yourself questions, right? Yeah. So that's, 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 to me, that's the trick. So beautiful. As, as we near the end of the show and, and um, our good friend in Brazil, um, we need to die standing up. Changes make us stronger. Um, it, I mean, well said. Richard, beautiful. it's hard to think of more uplifting things than you've just said in that last section in integrating. Um, life is happening for you, I think, is... is is one of the greatest things I've learned from this. And every time I talk to you, I'm learning something different. Is there a final thought you can leave us with today, Richard? Yeah, I, I as you can imagine, as a, that, as a coach, I am a, my job is to hold space and to allow whatever is coming to come up. And so I, I, I'm reflecting often on this moment and I'm going to go right to what we just talked about. When you can allow yourself, and it's an allowing, it's a letting go that life is happening for me. If I can really let that hit 
like life is happening for me. Uh, okay, and now I can I can take from that. That moment to me is the is the the the, the, the breakthrough that that allows the next thing to happen. Because yeah. then you don't stay stuck. Yeah, it makes sense. Richard, you are so amazing. Look, if you want to learn more direct from Richard, sorry if he's not one of your best friends, but <laughs> I, I pick his brain every chance I get. Um, so richardardencoaching.com. Um, he's available, you know, at Richard Arden. And uh, I'm sure if you mention my name, I'm putting him on the spot. Maybe you'll even get a little discount. I don't know. I don't know. I will. I will. I will. I will like take how care I do of that. You. Like I, how I, we I do that. Discount for whoever's watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, Richard, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Not only did everyone who watched originally hang out, but we just grew in viewers, and that means what you're saying is working, and what you're saying is exactly what we needed on National Hairstylist Day. Thank you. I love you, Richard. Thank you so much for doing this with us. I feel enlightened once again. <laughs> and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Babe. Thank you so much. I, I, I'm thrilled to be here. And um, anybody watching, please, please hit me up in a DM. If you have any questions, you want to process something, um, I am more than happy to uh, uh, connect one on one to to provide some um, support for you we, for for you as you as as you move through this these are challenging times but uh, we will we will get through this together um, thank you so much for having me Sean. and richard arden coaching.com a r d e n coaching.com make sure you check them out thank you everyone for watching we'll see you again next week with our next live we have a lot of good stuff coming your way bye bye y'all